Um, hi guys, my name is Jenny Bell Hernandez. I'm gonna be the host for today's Zoom. It's going to be on section K. And the disclaimer that we always read just for, you know, safety, uh, for everyone's safety, is that the, the BCBA exam prep study group was created and <coughs> by and for students to earn the BCBA or the BCABA certification. We gotta remember that most of the leaders and participants are not BCBAs or BCABA at this time. So this minute, and these meetings are meant to have active discussion to collaborate and to co collaborate, ask questions and provide helpful suggestions to better understand the BC, the BACB fourth edition task list concepts. Due to this, it is important to know that all viewers and participants are responsible for verifying the accuracy of the information being provided in order to successfully prepare for the BCBA, BCABA. And I always like to remember that the whole thing why I wrote this part was because uh, um, we're not certified yet. So sometimes we make mistakes, sometimes we add things that there shouldn't be there. And then we always need to double check everything that we say here. Uh, to make sure that it's the correct information. Mm -hmm. And let's remember not to share any um, specific questions from the test or any paid resources. And if we share anything from open resources that are free, just give credit to it. And the last thing is you, we created this type of rule thing or guidance to make the, the Zoom smooth. Basically, don't interrupt each other. Let's unmute the mic whenever we can. In my case, I always do questions, so let's not give the answer right away. Let's wait until I finish uh, giving the possible uh, answers, like the choices, so we can answer back. And that way, it's better for everybody else that is hearing it at the house. <coughs> and be respectful from others. That's it. A uh, reminder is to uh, the questions were created by me, and uh, I today I used like three different resources: Pass the BKBA Exam Manual, Seventh Edition, Cooper Second Edition, and Mayor Third Edition. Okay, so basically, I'm gonna make it easy on us because since it's just the three of us. Uh, here, I'm gonna. Uh, this part is about the protocol for providing feedback. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you two choices and you're gonna tell me which one goes first, okay? Okay. So positive empathetic statement, given, uh, uh, let me say it in more friendly words. So give a positive empathetic statement or identify skills performed correctly. Which one should be doing, done first when giving feedback to the RBTs, for example? Uh, Can you say the opposite again? Yeah, uh, the, the first one I said was positive empathetic statement. And the second one I said is identify skills performed correctly. Would it be identifying skills performed correctly first? First, correctly first yeah. Um, let's see. Wait. It's actually the positive empathetic statement. So yeah. we're going to start the conversation with just a positive, empathetic statement. Empathetic state, a simple one. Just, oh my God, I like, you know, oh my God, you did so good, you know, with the client overall. Just something in general. Yeah. <laughs> that one's tricky. <laughs> I don't know if the test is going to ask us how to do it in order, but I just took a mock and it was, give, it was asking in the order of things. I don't know how picky they are. I'm going to give you the second one is the one that we talked about. Identify skills performed correctly. So we have the third one and the, I'll give you the third one and another one. So you tell me which one comes next. Ad, uh, allow individual to ask questions or identify skills performed incorrectly. Uh, identify skills performed incorrectly. Good job, Jacqueline. Thank you. Yes. So. First, we have to identify, uh, then goes identify skills performed incorrectly. After that, that comes a specify how to change or improve performance problem. Then comes the one that I said, allow um, individual to ask questions. Then I'm gonna read the last two and you tell me which one you think comes next. Um, give a positive and supportive statement or describe what should come next. 
Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Let me just give it to you. <laughs> yeah. Describe positive statement. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it is that one. Describe what should be done next. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's describe what should be done next. And mm. the last one is end with a positive with a support statement. So if you notice, I sort of color coordinated it into the green is the positive. So you see, it's like a sandwich, sort of. Like positive, positive, then negative, negative. I let them ask questions, then a little bit of negative, and then positive again. So the key for it is always start with positive and always end with positive. I wrote this one right here because um, most, <laughs> You, sometimes we're really good at doing it with clients, like our Asher clients, but I haven't seen it done too much with RBTs and other people. Like it's hard for sometimes for BCBAs to remember to do this, not just with the little kids, but also with the adults and everybody else. My but, BCBA actually taught me that this could also be used for um, parent training and teacher training as well. Yeah, <laughs> I do use it a lot with everybody. Uh, and I, I don't necessarily remember the middle part. Uh, that's why I wrote it down. But I do remember, I do emphasize it starting with a positive uh, a statement and ending in a positive statement. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like when you're giving parent feedback, like after I've heard it done, I haven't read it in a book, but I've heard it like from a practical stand, in, in practical right. say that when you're talking to the parent after giving therapy to the child, that's the way you should get the feedback. Never start right. with, oh, he couldn't do this, he couldn't do that, you know, he struggled with this and that. You always start with the, the good, then the bad, then the good again. Right. So that's why I color coordinated it. <sighs> okay, so this one is, somebody posted it in the, in the chat that they were having trouble with this so I made a little chart for us I took a mock today and it appeared in two different questions so by the way great score oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed because <laughs> I didn't yeah. to rush <laughs> I you did great thank you thank you so um let me see let me put this down okay so it's a little confusing when you see it all, all at once, but I wanted us to talk a little bit about each one to see if we can figure it out. So who can talk about treatment drift? We have here the confusing one that could that they gave us in the mock is that they sort of like put them all together. So the most confusing one could be treatment drift and observer drift. So let's try to focus on what's the difference between them. Does anybody feel comfortable talking about treatment drift? If you don't, that's good. We'll just give the definition and then talk about it. I can try. I'm, I'm not 100%, but I can try. Okay. Okay, so I think that treatment drift is when something on the actual, uh, the actual intervention does not go as planned. So instead of it being the observer, the actual um, implementation, doesn't go the way it should be going. And then observer is actually what's being seen is not what, sh what should be, like the data is not being collected properly. I, yeah, I think you're completely correct. Let's verify that, but I think that's the nitty gritty of it. I wrote it word by word from what the book says. And I wrote, the page number but the first one i skipped the page number let me if i find it i'll add it to the powerpoint later but it, they're sort of in the same area <coughs> so treatment drift occurs when the implementation of the treatment changes and i also put differs or varies from what it was originally intended to be it can occur when the treatment or iv is complex and difficult for pr practitioner to implement so they were explaining it more in the sense of, I think it was from Cooper. Uh, they were explaining it more in the sense of, uh, from the research point of view, they, they said a lot of independent variable. They, they, when they write it, the original one is written 
um, very confusing, very complex, very difficult to follow. So when the pe person um, implements it, then it gets confused and it doesn't follow the original instruction. So it's not that the practitioner does it necessarily on purpose, but it does happen. And they also gave another example of a teacher who when the um, researcher came to observe, she would, do, she would follow the program exactly how it was written. But when the observer, when the researcher wasn't there, she would just pick and choose whatever she liked best about the treatment. I found that funny. <laughs> it's like a little kid, you know? Would that be considered reactivity? Or that, would that still be considered treatment drift? Everything that I said is from what I read in the book. So it's treatment drift. Okay. Yeah. So observer drift is what Jamie said. Anybody else wants to add a little bit more to it or say it in your own words so you can practice? I think she about talked it? about uh, treatment drift, isn't it? She didn't talk about observer drift, did she? she, did. she yeah, I did. I said, I said about? that it's what the observer um, sees if the... But it's more on, on the data. So observer drift is more about the data, how the data is collected if it's not collected properly. And the treatment drift is more about the plan if it's being implemented properly. And the reactivity is who is implementing the plan and they are, not, they are doing it based on being observed and they are changing the, their implementation of the plan based on being observed. That's reactivity. Yeah, you're right. And is it observer drift unintentional? Intentionally, they don't do it on purpose when they're collecting data. It's not like they. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's right. on, it's not on purpose. I no, think. they're not on purpose. No, they're not. But on reactivity purpose. is. Yes, reactivity is. Reactivity is yeah. So observer drift, like Damien said, is the shifting of service interpretation of the definition of the uh, target behavior from that what is used in the training. And the observer expands or compresses, and I like this, he either adds to it or takes away from the original definition. <coughs> and by the way, treatment drift is in page 235 in the Cooper book, okay? And then observer bias. Did anybody talk about it already or no? No. Okay, anybody wants to talk about it? Well, from its name, uh, obviously the observers being biased towards who is implementing the program. I don't know the exact definition for it. It's well, observer, who, uh, anybody else? So, isn't this purpose? Uh, purposeful isn't this something that you're like covering yes. up the data um like let's say a child in a classroom you know that you think is really cute or you really like them and you know you're saying oh i'm gonna i'm just gonna put two um frequency data for physical aggression um you know because you like them and they're cute you know things like um, that like you're you're very biased about it so yeah, they, they might have done it like 10 times, but you're just only doing right. it two. You're just doing two, right? Yeah. Exactly. And so sometimes, you, remember, bias is sort of like, sometimes people don't even realize that they have bias. Right. So it's not necessarily like on your face, it's, it, but it's sometimes subconscious type of thing. But yeah, I, it's more like a, it's like a natural protection because of something. Yeah. But it's something that we, most of the time, we don't do on purpose. <laughs> Yeah. It's also like you know the terminal goal, so you're going to sway your data more toward what the goal's supposed to be. Yeah, and that's key, uh, Ashley. Was it Ashley who said that? Yes. That's key, Ashley, because they also added that it's always good to have, quote unquote, a blind or a naive observer. Naive, yeah. Uh, naive There's a couple observer. questions about naive in the mocks. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I added naive. Naive, I. I read it in a book, I don't remember where, and in a mock, and blind, ha a mayor has the word blind. So basically, it's like you said, that doesn't know the goals of the program. Okay, reactivity, we already talked about it, and it's a change in behavior that may occur when the part part participant is aware that their behavior is being observed. 
And what do you think is the difference between reactivity and observer reactivity? <laughs> well, reactivity is the person who's implementing the plan while observer reactivity is the person who observes the, the therapist or whoever. Mm -hmm. So reactivity happens to the person that has been, that is being observed, right? Like yes. our client. And observer reactivity is the, we're gonna read it now because I wanna read it right, right from there. The behavior of the observer. So us as the BCBA, mm -hmm. our behavior changes when we're collecting the data. Can, e can be influenced by the knowledge that others are evaluating their data. Yes. So the observer anticipates that another observer will record the behavior in a certain way. His data might be influenced by what he anticipates the other observers may record. So this one depends observer from observer. The observer being observed. <laughs> for okay, a lack okay, of okay, I get it. Uh -huh. Anybody else wants to talk more about it or are you ready to? So, so would a good example of this like um, be if a BCBA is being audited, something like that? Could be, yeah. If okay. It's being observed, yeah. Or the right. RBT, okay. you're observing the RBT, collect that. Yeah. Okay. My but, th but that, but, <laughs> but I think that won't ch change because that comes like as, as a permanent product because that's already been done. Oh, this that's is right. This is something Which that one? the BCA, audit. the audit the audit is like measuring the permanent product which has been done. Right. Well, is, I, have, to be yeah, live. I don't know much about an audit, but if they're coming to observe you in an audit, do they come and observe you what you're doing? No audit, no. Okay. No, audit no, is, they observe your, like you said, permanent product. Right. It is a permanent product. Right. Right. My thought was reactivity is when the client changes. So it's like the child itself changes its yes. behavior. And then observer reactivity is like if you're a BCBA watching the RBT, the RBT implements it differently when they're being observed. Yes. Perfect. I think we got this one. Let's move on to questions then. I am collecting data on Danny's out of seat behavior while he does math work for 30 minutes at school. During this time, Danny never gets out of his seat. The teacher later tells me that usually he gets out of his seat about five times during math. What could explain Danny's change in behavior? A, reactivity, B, observer reactivity, C, none of the above, D, all of the above. Probably A. A. Ah, that was fast, guys. <laughs> Reactivity. I created this one before I created the other one, so that's why I wrote all the explanation here. But it's the same thing, we talked about it. And it's easy when we just talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie's tantrum behavior is it's written in the program as the following. Anytime Sophie drops to the floor and screams. During the past week, Sophie was dropping to the floor, crying and screaming five times per day. Sophie's R uh, RBT, Lara, collects data and, um, data and reports that Sophie engaged in tantrum behavior five times per day. The BCBA reminds Lara that crying is not part of the operational definition of tantrum. This is an example of a, treatment drift, B, observer drift, C, observer bias, or D, treatment bias. Treatment drift. Anybody else? Thank you, thank you. Let's get at least three people answering. Treatment drift. Wait, hold on, I, hold on, I'm trying to reread this. But. Yeah. It's okay, take your time. There's no rush. But I do have one already for A, right? For treatment drift. Uh, uh, I think it's observer drift. So we have one for B. I, I agree with B. Yeah, now that I read it, it's B. <laughs> yeah. So everybody changed their mind now to B, or you still want to? Anybody else wants to go for A? Mm. Come on, Ben. Take your time, guys. Sometimes I rush through this. 
when I think about observer drift, I think about data. They're collecting data. And treatment drift, I think about that they are actually, you know, manipulating the IV. Mm -hmm. So, so you want me to move on? Implementing the, the intervention. And if somebody's implementing the intervention, is that not part of a treatment drift or? Let's see the answer. We ready? All right. Observer. Okay. <laughs> it was B. Why was it B? I think, uh, I think two of you guys, Jennifer and somebody else said B. Anybody yeah. wants to defend B? I mean, anybody wants to defend it or explain it? I think Jennifer explained it. You want to repeat, Jennifer, was it you? Yeah, I said because she's collecting data. Anytime I think about observer drift, I think about they are collecting data. Anytime I think about treatment drift, I think about that they are implementing the plan. You're right, Jennifer. I think I agree with you now because it's when you're collecting, that should be part of observation. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, she's adding information to the definition, but she's not adding information to the treatment. She's not adding treatment. Yeah. She's not adding a, a different part of the treatment. Makes sense. Yeah, I like that one. Thank you, Jennifer. So guys, uh, treatment bias, I saw it in the mock and I looked for it in Mayer and Cooper and I couldn't find it. Have you guys seen this? Is that a word or is that invented or made up? I know it's a word, but you know what I mean. Is that a term? Treatment bias? <coughs> I thought I've heard that before. I, we heard it. We, we heard it today in the mock that we took. Right, but, but I've, I think I've heard it in the past too. But I, I, don't, I don't, know. don't know where. I think so too, but I looked for it and I didn't find it. So what I wrote here is exactly that I didn't find it. I might be made up, but I really don't know. But it would be good to, if anybody wants to look for it somewhere else. I also Google it, like treatment bias, ABA, and I didn't find anything. Hmm. Interesting. So it might be one of those things that we want to do homework on. Okay. When providing feedback to an RBT, the BCBA should start with a, identifying the skills the RBT re, uh, performed correctly. B, giving a positive empathetic statement. C, identifying the skills the RBT performed incorrectly. Or D, none of the above. B. B. Wow. Why were you so fast at answering that? Because, <laughs> because of you, your you, sandwich. Yeah, you, <laughs> Good you, job. Your, your, your sandwich was delicious, that's why. <laughs> Sandwich. I was yeah. trying to find some, you know, like lettuce and I think, tomatoes. No, I actually with the red, I think you put tomatoes in there. I, <laughs> I did. I've seen those visuals with actual sandwiches. So that's right, guys. And here I have the page. AKA for treatment integrity. Uh, procedural fidelity, fidelity of implementation, program integrity. None of the above or all of the above. <coughs> Taking time. Today, I didn't want to trick you. I didn't try even to trick you. I just wanted us to know the information. A. So I have one for A. I I'm would not say with, with E. Yes, E. I want to say E, but then, like, I'm not good with AKA, so I went with A. <laughs> no, I think we did this procedural fidelity, fidelity of information. Obviously, there is two. A and C are correct that I remember. So if there is two, yeah. I mean all of the above. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Good yeah, strategy. Anybody else? Uh, but let me let me ask you a question, and this this also might be a um, like a testing question. If we choose A uh, E, would D or is that like an error? Would D be part of E? Oh, yeah. No, I made a mistake. I should have gone. First, okay, of, okay. All, first of all, there is no all of the above questions in the test, so don't worry about it. Okay, it's okay, cool. Not, awesome. Not, that's that's great. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
Oh my God, that means I'm going to do great. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> Most of my wrong answers are none of the above, all of the above. Those are the worst. But do they have all of the above? What about select two? Like today I was taking that bill. And I, I missed a couple because it was like select two. I didn't even see that at first. I don't know if Martin heard you, Martin. Yeah, what was the question? Like, what about like if they say select two answers? Uh, no, there's not select two answers. It's okay. only one. Okay. That you select. That's great. Okay, that's a that's good news. So, yeah, so none of the above, but do they have all of the above? Because most of the mocks that I see have both. It's for learning purposes. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay, it's true. Okay. That's true. Okay, so I personally like to put always both because I don't want to give you a hint that is one or the other. Mm -hmm. But um, in this case, you would, uh, what did we say? We, are we going with what Martin will say? E, so yes. He chose A, right? He chose A? I chose no, he e. changed to E. Oh, he changed to E. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I chose A. Okay. So it's E, actually, all of the above. Is procedure fidelity, fidelity of implementation and program integrity. AKA. We just have to memorize those. I have no idea. If anybody has a tip. I remember this from last night's uh, Zoom, so. Good. Those things we just need to sit down and do it over and over again. Yeah. Uh huh. Now, competency-based training, should, when should feedback be given? A, after the observation in a written report. B, immediately after the observation. C, after the parents of the client have left the room. It is important to give feedback in private. D, none of the above. Or E, all of the above. I'll go with B. B. Two for B. B, yeah. Three for B. That's good, guys. We're flying through this today because I'm not tricking you. <laughs> I think we're going to finish super fast today. Okay, so you're right. It's immediately after the solution. I've read it in different res uh, recent resources that they all say immediately. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. Reinforcement should be immediate. Otherwise, it doesn't have the same effect. That's true. That's not a good way to put it. All of the above are ways to effectively monitor staff performance, except I just wrote what the book said. I didn't expand on it. It's based on past the big ABA. So A is inform, B is be friendly, uh, C is overt, D is covert, E is feedback. D. D, I have one for D. Yeah. Two for D. Anybody else? You guys are saying D like in dog? Like dog, dog okay. yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm missing one person. <laughs> Still thinking about. So I'm still the, thinking about it too. I like okay, okay, I'm over. sorry. I, I tend to rush you guys. I don't like doing that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Take your time. And today we have time because I think this is one of the last ones. It could be so I don't know, would would friendly I don't know. Uh. Yeah, I wrote just one word because it's what, so they, what they would they, if they would be basically what they, they need. Mm -hmm. If it would ahead. be like positive or something about being positive then i would go for that but just the word friendly i would choose <laughs> d maybe i'm wrong but just to give you another I know, answer i, I want to say b but like it's I mean, d or d i can't i'd be getting those too confused so, so one of those two yeah. so b as in boy or d as in dog one of those two okay I would go with 
B. I'm going to go with B as in boy. B yeah. as in boy. Okay. It's in page 268. It's covert. Okay. Yeah. I know B was tricky because it was just a word. And they, the way they gave it so we can remember is remember FIFO. So F I F O. FIFO. So it's page 209 on Pass the Big? 268. Oh, okay. So let me see if I can find it. I can read it for you. 268. Uh, but remember, overt and covert, they're opposite. So even if we don't know what friendly was referring to, we should have realized that over and covert cannot be in the same because you either do it overt or you do it covert, I guess. Mm. That's right. my thing. Right. Yeah. 268. Let me read you what they have for friendly. Be friendly, polite, and courteous to staff. For informed, they have informed staff, they are being monitored and why. For overt, they have monitored staff, uh, staff overtly, as covert monitoring brings negative feelings. And in feedback, they have the feedback, the feedback should be given to a staff ASAP, meaning immediately, which is what we already covered, right? So don't you think that sometimes the cameras <laughs> that are there, those are covert type of uh, monitoring anyway yeah but they they you, i think what they mean by that is like you need to tell them you need to let them know like don't put a hidden camera and like oh surprise them i was you know filming right. mm. that would be very yeah. offensive yeah they yeah. need to, they need to be aware of what's going on yeah. yeah i see what you're saying you're saying like it's hiding and but i think what they're referring Uncovered is not like the physical place of being hidden. Well, but this makes sense, yeah, because this is the effective way of monitoring. So the effective way is not covert. Exactly. The effective way is these four informed, friendly, overt, and feedback. Yep. Yeah, overt meaning be out in yeah. the open. Look, we're going to record you, and the camera is going to be hidden in the eye of the teddy bear. Yeah. <clears throat> it's makes sense. Hidden, but you know it. Right. Okay. Okay. What should a BCBA consider when developing a behavior support plan? A, your resources. B, staff development. C, uh, on-site presence of a supervisor. D, staff absenteeism and turnover. E, none of the above. F, all of the above. And all of the above doesn't include none of the above. So let's just remember that. And this one, I didn't try to trigger either. I just wrote exactly what the book had. When you say your resources, you're talking about like tools? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all of the above. Okay, I have one for all of the above. I want to say, um, A. I would say all of the above. Okay, I have one a, a one for A and two for all of the above. Anybody else want to help or wants to go in? Say a. A? Mm -hmm. a. So we, we're tied, right? We're tied. Two and two. Who wants to break the tie, guys? You. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Come on, somebody be brave. Break the tie. Is it F or is it A? Or is it something else? <laughs> or, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Pavardi, <laughs> you know all the answers. <laughs> you don't want to break it? You are the sources? Just huh? You are the sources? You are the sources? 
your resources. Yeah. Your resources. A. So she's breaking the tie with another A. With another a. There you go. Yes. Thank you for participating. It's all of the above. Go ahead, my team. Go ahead. Woo woo. <laughs> woo woo. Good job, team. Oh. Team F. <laughs> okay. We have a PS... ever been good, huh? So it is a it PSC, is a... right? Not the, uh, it's a behavior support plan. It's uh, nothing, nothing. You guys carry on. I'm listening. I'm driving. <laughs> I'll ask later. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> That's how so you don't get a ticket. Yeah, yeah. be careful. Have us, on, have us on speaker. So uh, I found it interesting that they have a, sta a staff absenteeism and turnover. And the comment that they have for that one is, although difficult to control, it must be considered. Why do you think that's important, guys? You have to be well, because it's important because if you have a staff um, absentee or turnover, that affects the child because like if you work in a clinic like myself, 